Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today we're going to talk about a really interesting subject, it's the topic of mind mapping. Hopefully you've actually heard about mind mapping. My children were taught my mind mapping in elementary school, and they were also given some pointers when they were in middle school. I think it's becoming more and more popular. But basically, it's a way of taking notes and solving problems and making goals. It's based on the configuration of a brain cell. Okay, so in the brain cell, you have a core, and then you have all of these things coming out called dendrites and neurons, okay? So there's the core, and there's, think of the, a spoke of a wheel. You have the core where the, where the main thing of the wheel is, and then all those spokes that come out. And all those spokes represent the dendrites and the neurons. Now, what scientists have found is that we don't think linear. Like when you and I in the olden days, when we were making an outline for anything or trying to solve a problem or trying to take notes in a classroom, and especially in high school, college, we would take linear notes. They were in a long line. They have found that because of the configuration of a brain cell that we actually think circular. Now, we know of some of the jokes that were made years ago about circular thinkers, people thinking in circles, you know, they just keep going around and around with the same thing. Well, that's not how the mind works. The mind actually works in a circular fashion with all different kinds of things coming out from the dendrites and the neurons. And the reason being is we're able to make associations and we're able to make connections to other pieces and bits of information. I'm going to show you some examples of a mind map and so to help you to understand exactly how this is done. This is a very simple one and most mind maps don't look like this because when you do a mind map, you're actually doing it by hand. But you can see that the core of the mind map is lifelong learning, and then the different spokes represent things, and then you have little things that are shoot-offs from each one of them. And that's when you, when you put the core thing in, like let's say you're trying to solve some kind of a problem. You put that in the middle, you put about six spokes on, out on the outside, that those would represent the neurons or the dendrites, and then you list different things on each one of those main spokes. Then as you're doing, sometimes when you're working over here, another idea will pop in over here. And so then you can scribble in something here, and then while you're over here, something down here may come to mind. So this is all a part of associative thinking and making connections. It helps people to see the big picture. When I first started learning how to mind map, it was fascinating to me because one thing that I love to do is to see how information connects. So in my mind, I had this huge puzzle. And every time I learn something new, it's like being able to take a piece of the puzzle and to fit it into that part. Now that I know about mind mapping, when I sit down or when one of my kids sat down in high school or college to figure out a problem, we can, you can actually draw this simple mind map with the core in the center, the dendrites coming out on all, all of the different sides, and then as something else comes up, then you put those in, you put all the particulars in, all the different things. If you're taking notes in college, let's say in a biology class, you have like cells in the middle and you're talking all about the different things and the forms of cells and you're writing down all of the details and the particulars. While you're writing over here, something else will come up that will, that will trigger, trigger your memory for something here. They've gone back into history and they have found that some of the most brilliant minds actually have used mind maps. Leonardo da Vinci used them extensively he wrote many, many, and they found many scribbles of his that showed different kinds of mind maps. Albert Einstein was another one who wrote a great many of different th thoughts and problems and different scientific things that he was working on. As I mentioned before, he would play his violin to help organize his thoughts. Then he would go and he would create these mind maps and be able to solve the issues and problems um, before him. Another one that they think that some of his scribbles looked very similar to mind maps was Beethoven. There have been other conductors who have actually taken some of Beethoven's works, particularly his Fifth Symphony, and they've created a mind map of the Fifth Symphony so they could see how they were going to conduct it with the orchestra, how all the different pieces had to come together, what were the, you know, how to create you know, the, the perfect um, finale to this incredible piece of music and so forth. If your child has a problem in school, or if they're having a problem with somebody that they're being bullied or made fun of, or they're just uh, having a difficult time, maybe in a math class or a history class, have them create a mind map. 
Remember, there's a core, is the configuration of a brain cell, and then you have all of these different spokes coming out. Now, another interesting thing that they found out that is that there's mind maps or these very same configurations in nature. We see them with stars, the core of the star, and then the light beam shining out of it. We even see it with um, lightning. You can see the core and all the, the dendrites, so to speak, coming out of it. We see it with snowflakes, the center of the snowflakes and all of the different uh, web of the snowflake coming out of it. We see it even with like a peacock feather, and you can find it in just about anything in nature. You can see it with leaves, you can see it with trees, you can see it with birds, but here, you know, each one of these um, feathers, it has the core and then little tiny feathers coming out of each, each one of those. This is actually a fractal. It looks very much like a snowflake. Fractals are actually mathematical configurations that they come up with these designs from. But you can see the core and you can see all the radiations that come out from it. There's a fabulous mind mapping book. It's called The Mind Map Book. And it's Tony Busan, and it is fabulous. It will take you through the step-by-steps on how to actually create a mind map. It will help you to understand that mind maps are found everywhere in nature. It will help you to understand that it can be used as a problem solving, it can be used for goal setting, it can be used for note taking, and many, many other things as well. So if your child in, has had the opportunity in school to actually make a mind map, have them draw one for you and then have them explain the parts. And then the next time that there's a problem or a challenge in your family, maybe you want to put that in the core and have all of the family members to, to, together create a mind map. Now here's what you will find, that no two people think alike. Everyone is extraordinarily unique. We all approach problems in a different way. We all come up with maybe similar uh, solutions, but usually never. <laughs> usually they're different solutions and you can take all these different solutions and decide on as a family, okay, which one is going to be the best for our family, for the growth, for our togetherness, our closeness, our bond, and so on and so forth. You will see that they went in and they talked to bankers and they asked them, give me synonyms for the word money. And they all came up with different types of words. They've gone in and they've talked to teachers and they said, give me a word, give me syn synonyms for the word student. And they all come up with different, different words for the, for the same, same core word that helps us to understand that we all approach life differently. We all solve problems differently. Our brains all work differently which makes us, that's all of the stuff that helps the world to go around. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.